Hello my fellow space engineers, I'm Sam, the far middle-aged man, and this is a playful of KFC, and this is a very drooly boy. Say hi Oz, say hi, high five, high five, good boy, there you go, good boy, good boy. So today I've got a pretty simple list to go through. Yeah, it's just a couple of mods that help me enjoy the game in various different ways. We're talking extra blocks, uh, a couple of scripts, and even a shiny new tool, the engineer. Stick around for all that and more right after this sick intro that I totally didn't just make in five minutes. Okay, we are starting off strong with the epic paint gun mod, which coincidentally was a recommendation from several viewers of the previous video. This is one of my favorite mods of all time, and hopefully it's soon to be one of yours. So what does this mod do? Firstly, it adds an extra tool to the game called the paint gun. The paint gun requires specialized ammo called the paint chemicals, which is simply created from gravel. It's fairly cheap to mass produce. Okay. So why would you use this instead of the built-in paint tools within Space Engineers? First and foremost, the built-in painting tools absolutely suck. You have little to no instructions provided by the UI and it's super easy to accidentally mess up and there's no real way to undo what you've just spent hours working on. With the Penguin mod, you can see the instructions on screen 100% of the time. Also, it just feels more natural. Plus, it helps you get rid of some of that pesky gravel. You can still bulk paint using the control shown on screen, so don't worry about losing any of the functionality from the base game. Holding shift and or control still works the same way. Additionally, if you hold the right mouse button as you paint, you can actually target specific blocks behind what you're currently targeting. The second big reason is you can use this to paint any of your own faction grids, whereas the base game normally only lets you paint grids that you are the 100% owner. If you're on a server, you're working as part of a team, this is an absolute godsend. Lastly, it has another really amazing feature that I think should be part of the base game, and that is the replace paint feature. So let's say you've painted your entire ship and you've got a couple of nice white stripes going all the way down the hull. I mean, who doesn't love that, right? Let's say that you weren't happy with the, the, the rest of the color, the bulk color of the ship but you didn't want to have to redo the whole of the white stripes all the way down because it's a, it's a faff, right? Well, the paint gun mod actually allows you to replace colors across the entire grid or subgrid, leaving those white stripes exactly how you had them. Sadly, you do need to be in creative mode to do this or be an admin on the server that you're playing on, but it's still a really, really nice feature to have. Honestly, I could do a full video on the paint gun mod alone. It really is a worthwhile addition to any engineer's arsenal, but we're only at number 10 here. We need to get cracking. On to number nine. Okay, next up we have the Weather Be Nicer mod, which actually does something quite clever to help save you a great amount of pain. So to explain why this mod is essential, I'm gonna take you back to the last time you were on Pertum and went from being stuck in a heavy sandstorm to being struck by lightning and then straight back into a sandstorm. Yes, if you are a camel with a fetish for licking batteries, then that might be your thing. But for the rest of us mere mortals, we've got better ways to spend our time. The way this mod works is that it actually adds a chance for the random weather event to just be clear, nice, perfect weather. This takes up a certain percentage of the choice that the game has to choose from, meaning that you get less detrimental weather effects one after the other. You'll still get bad weather and you know, you'll still get struck by lightning, but they'll be substantially less frequent. So in addition to the Weather Be Nicer mod, we also have the Weather Rebalance mod. This mod is a, a nice addition if you really hate the lightning storms. It does some other things, but the main two changes here are to reduce the amount of damage caused by the lightning strikes by around 90%, and to increase the range of the decoy's lightning rod protection by about 50%. 
Lights! Camera! Action! What do you mean the camera isn't ready yet? How are we going to shoot this video? Amateurs! So, one of the really cool things in Space Engineers is the ability to use cameras for a multitude of reasons. Most notably, being able to see where you're going when you're flying a drone. The vanilla cameras in Space Engineers, they're, they're, they're okay, they're manageable, but they can be oh so much better. So our first mod here at number 8 is Clean Camera. This is a, an alternative overlay for the camera's view screen. As the name of the mod suggests, it is just clean and simple. Straight, that's, that's straightforward, that's all it does. It pairs nicely with the second mod though, which is Camera Panning which actually allows you to move the camera's viewport in various ways. So you can use your WASD, your standard character controls, to move the camera up, down, left, right. You can also tilt it left and right using the Q and E like you were flying the jetpack. You can also scroll to zoom in, but I think you can do this in the vanilla cameras as well. So I don't really know if that's a, a, a change. But essentially, it just makes the cameras in the game much more useful. It's not a huge change, but once you've used these for a while, you you just won't be able to live without either of them. They're, they're just really good, very subtle changes to the game that really help. Okay, time to lose your mind with inventory management. Here we have the better stone mod. As outlined in the mod's description, rarely will you find ore in its purest form. All the vanilla planetary ores, they're buried around 10 times deeper than they normally would be. But they're also 5 times larger, just to compensate. So this does make things a little harder, but it rewards you for coming across such a pure find. Instead of going after the pure forms of the ore, though, your drilling escapades will instead be focused on finding new variants of stone, comprised of various elements. You absolutely can come across dozens of different ore combinations and you'll notice that all the icons have been redone retextured they look absolutely beautiful and you're just going to go insane with the amount of slots it's taking up in your inventory uh, this mod is going to give you countless reasons to go out and explore you're going to find new types of stone to collect uh, and hopefully it's going to make it easier to find those rare earth resources that you normally struggle with at the start of a game you can find things like cobalt, nickel embedded in the stone, but when you refine it, normally when you just refine stone, you just get a little bit of a certain thing. You could find cobalt embedded in the stone, which normally you wouldn't be able to get that resource until you found a cobalt node, but it, you can go hours without coming across cobalt and then you're stuck because you can't build metal grids and once you can't build metal grids, you can't build any sort of ship. This way does make that a lot easier. Okay, this one is super basic, but it does add something for those who think that 100 meters per second is just too damn slow. For this specific mod, it ups the speed of large grid vehicles to 300 meters a second, and small grid, including the player, to 500 meters a second. There are a few different variations on this mod. There's, there's even an unlimited speed one, but I find this one to be a little bit more balanced. Not to mention, I don't die nearly as often when flying back to the base. There's really not that much else to say about this one. So let's get moving on to number five. Ah, our first script. Beautiful, beautiful, sir. Automatic LCDs is friggin' amazing. There are literally hundreds of applications for it. From making nice looking cockpit interiors, to creating monitors to track what's in a specific cargo container, you can track the input and output levels of all your power blocks. You can monitor ammo usage in your turrets. You can even use it to keep an eye on the recharge level of those pesky jump drives. Now, fair warning here, all of this amazing stuff does come at the cost of having to enable scripts in your game. If you don't know how to enable scripts, you simply just go to the main menu, go to options and enable experimental mode next you'll need to go into the load game screen and find your world go into the settings choose enable in-game scripts simple nice and easy just know as well that some scripts can be dangerous to the point that they break your save file 
So you do need to be careful which ones you use and which ones you install. Automatic LCDs is perfectly safe. You don't need to worry about it. You literally cannot go wrong using it. A full user guide can be found on the mod page. I do highly recommend you read through that before delving in. It's very helpful. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Yeah, this mod really levels up the way you interact with LCDs in the game. They just become infinitely more useful. Seriously, you will use this script on every single build, 100% guaranteed. Alrighty, number four brings us yet another script. This time it is Izzy's Inventory Manager. This script is the definition of beautiful. You install this on your main base, you set up a few simple parameters on your cargo containers, and you will never struggle to find anything again. Seriously, look at the feature list on the mod page. It's, it, it's just an auto install for me. Uh, and for many of you, I'd imagine. Uh, aside from all of these things listed, it actually helps in another very subtle way. Because you've got to add tags to your blocks to tell the script how you want it to interact with your imagery, you're actually getting into the habit of naming your blocks and giving them helpful naming conventions. This is just an insanely useful skill to have, and it can really save you when you most need it. All right, all right, all right, enough about scripts. Let's move on to some fun stuff, okay? Here at number three, we have the Hover Engine mod. Now, I'm sure some of you have tried to build your own hovercraft without the mod, just using Atmo thrusters or whatever, and it's, it's, it's a pain, it's, it's a nightmare, right? You've got to manage your, your thrust overrides and steer and not crash. And it's just, it's a faff, it's a nightmare. It is doable, but you've got to be next, next level. You know, it's just crazy. The hover engine mod adds a couple of handy blocks to the game, which literally just act like repelling magnets against the surface of the planet. Slap a couple of forward thrusters and a gyro on your vehicle. Two of these underneath. There we go, hovercraft. Enough said. Ah, uh, Star Trek's got nothing on you, right? The Energy Shields mod adds an extra layer of protection to the grid that it's attached to. So any of the incoming fire first has to eat away at this like invisible barrier before it breaks through and damages any of the blocks on your ship. Ideally, this gives you time to get in there and finish off whatever's shooting at you or, you know, get away from it. Uh, combat in Space Engineers has always been pretty abysmal. Weapon Core did help somewhat with new ways to interact with turrets and control the battlefield, but you still need some kind of defensive defense, you know? This particular shield mod kind of acts like the jump drive. So you take a few hits, the charge level goes down, it needs a bit of time to recharge. It also allows you to use modules, kind of like the refinery and the assembler. Uh, you can either use uh, flux coils, which increase the speed at which the shield regenerates, or you can add capacitors, which increase the, sh the total shield value that you've got, making it harder to break, essentially. Okay, folks, before we jump onto the number one spot on this list, you know that I'd like to take a moment here just to thank you for watching and plead for your continued support. Go on. You know you want to. You know. You know you want to. Go on. Go on. Slap it. Go on. Subscribe. A lot of love goes into making these videos and I've received so many amazing comments and suggestions so far. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you. All right, enough mush. It's time to find out what is at the number one spot of today's video. 10 more essential mods for space engineers. Let's crack on. Yes. Here we are. Azimuth Remastered is number one. Oh, I cannot tell you how much fun we've had with this mod on the community server. The blocks look absolutely beautiful and you can you can really make some interesting, not to mention powerful ships with them. Oof, where to start? Right, let, let's start with the thrusters. So both the large and small grid versions of these blocks are one by one by one in size. They're the one block thrusters, basically. Um, but they are as powerful as the large version, the three by three version. So with the size of them, you can easily hide them in like the outer armor of your ship without being, you don't need much greebling to cover them up. So because the thruster damage radius on this is one block, 
you can make a really, really tiny internal thrust system. And it's, it's just amazing what you can do with this. Okay, so following on from that, we have the cargo blocks. These have a huge cargo capacity when compared to the vanilla variants. They, they also look amazing. You, you cannot fault these at all. The small and large grid have different variants as well from each other. So just be sure to check all of them out. Find the one that looks right for your ship. Okay, next up we have the reactors. These things, again, same as the thrusters, they only take up one block of space, but the power output from one azimuth reactor is off the chart. One reactor can power your entire craft for literally years, real life years, just using a tiny amount of uranium. Just make sure you bury the reactor deep in the hull, because if you lose it and you don't have a backup, you are screwed. Lastly, we have the big guns. No, no, really, just a couple of big guns. That's that's part of the mod. You have some huge guns to slap on your ship. So much like the thrusters, they just they take up a smaller area than the vanilla counterpart. Uh, most of them come with like a six port conveyor on the bottom, or at least you know six ports available. Well, five ports because one of them is the gun. They're super easy to slot into the ship. They do need different ammo, so they don't use the vanilla ammo, they use their own custom ammo, and it's different per gun, so just be sure you make the right ammo before you dive into combat. If you do decide to use these, they are absolutely devastating, so just, just sit back and enjoy the fireworks. Alright, that's all for this one folks. If you've had as much fun watching this as I have recording it, please smash that like button, it really does help. You've been amazing. Thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you in the next one.